This is FIU Panther Talk, and this is Shula Bowl Week, rivalry week. It's Florida Atlantic and FIU, a terrific opportunity once more to celebrate Saturday night at the cage. FAU and FIU this Saturday night, and we are looking forward to it. Head coach Mike McIntyre, I'm AJ Ricketts. Thanks for joining us, as always, each week. Uh, coach, a lot to talk about. We're really excited for another rivalry. Uh, but just to recap the past week, hey, I know you were disappointed after the game. We won't sugarcoat things. Very transparent here. You were thrilled with the way things ended up. But when you look back on tape, on film, what can you take away with it? Or, or what, what were you emphasizing to the team after that game? Well, the one thing I will take it with is the kids kept playing extremely hard. I, yeah. I mean, they really did. I mean, the second half, they played extremely hard. They were trying. You know, the first half, we messed up some coverages in the secondary. We dropped some open passes in the open field. Uh, it just wasn't very pretty. Um, and we have to bounce back from it, and we have before, and we will again. And uh, it's a process, and uh, uh, definitely a, a disappointing outing. Um, but the young men have really, really responded this week and are working hard, and um, we need to play a lot better Saturday, and I believe we will. That's a good point. You know, we were, we were referencing that in the booth in, in the second half. There was a couple tackles for loss from, from the guys along the defensive line. You'd see Devon Strickland pop up and give a fist pump to the yeah. bench, or, or Trevante O'Neal really, really getting after you. I feel that's tough sometimes in the second half. The game's not going how you want. Your defensive line is still trying to pop some pads and bring energy. Right. That, that has to be encouraging. Yes, yeah. they went out and kept playing. Yeah. Um, I was extremely encouraged by that. I, um, it would have been very discouraging if they didn't. And they, they have that fight to them. They believe in each other. They care for each other. They're still fighting for each other. And we'll keep doing that. And, and we actually got better in the second half. Um, yeah. And you look at that and you say, well, that's a uh, silver lining. Well, you better look for the silver linings because if you didn't get better, it would really be worse. They actually improved in the second half. And so that will carry over this week. And we're a, we're a work in progress like everything. Um, and we've made excellent strides, but we got a, we've got a lot of strides to make left. And so we'll keep doing that. We'll keep working. And um, and hopefully that will show up better uh, for this Saturday. You know, there are microcosms in this game that almost are representative of the season. You know, you, 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 we've had our tough humbling games, Western yep. Kentucky, North Texas, but then obviously we bounce back, La Tech, New Mexico State, Charlotte. Yep. And in this game, you know, the, the defense, almost 500 yards of offense given up in the first half. But then right. again, flipped the, flipped the script. Second half gave up less than 100. And also right. they had three takeaways in that game. Yeah, exactly. They had, a, they had a pick six in the, in the yeah, first half. Right. I mean, how do, you, what, how do you evaluate? You know, you've, you've got well, some thing, really concerning things, but also really encouraging. Well, yeah. if you bust some coverages and you misfit a couple runs with a good football team, they take advantage it. of it. Yeah. You could do some of those things against a not as good football team with a good quarterback and not as good a running back, not seeing the hole, and all of a sudden the game's close. Right. So when you play really good football teams, things get magnified, and that we've got to, it showed us things that we need to keep improving on and keep working on. I want to ask you, you know, as as a head coach, you know, you, how you try to motivate a team, what you try to emphasize, you know, differs week after week. And look, after how, how do you balance? The, the big wins, the emotional moments that your mm -hmm. team has been able to put together this season, even the back-to-back -back wins versus holding them accountable. I know you said it was one of the more disappointing efforts this right. season. How do you balance that, challenging them, holding them accountable, with also realizing how far they've come week to week? Right. Um, well, you have to confront mistakes, yeah. my mistakes, coaches' mistakes, players' mistakes. And then, then you find a positive, corrective way to correct those mistakes. And then if you can correct those mistakes and we – all work together to do it, then you improve. No. Um, and that's what you do. And so um, you have to keep doing it. Keep it. And sometimes it's very painful to correct mistakes and <laughs> confront different issues, yeah. or we got to fix this, or we got to change this, or we have to make a personnel change, right. or, or that was a bad call by me. I need to make sure we don't make that call again. So you keep looking at that, and you keep evolving. And then you kind of find what your players do best, what people can handle best, and that improves. You keep improving as a team. and. You can have some drastic improvements, which we've had, yeah. and we've got to just keep pushing. Uh, defensively, we, Adrian Cole perhaps yes. had one of his best performances as an FIU Panther. To me, it was one of the most biggest standout games maybe since Stanley Thomas Oliver four years ago against Western Kentucky. This week, Adrian Cole had, had the interception, the fumble recovery, yeah. the touchdown, a bunch of pass breakups. Uh, what can you say about his efforts? Uh, he filled up right. the stat sheet defensively. Right, he yeah. did. I was telling Adrian um, Monday, um, we were. I was, saw him coming by. I said, "Hey, come here." And I go, "You're, you're, you're, you're growing up." He goes, "Yeah, I am." I know he came in the transfer, but yeah. he didn't play a whole lot there. 
and he's got three years for us, so he's got two more after this, and he's playing a lot more now. I said, things are, he goes, yeah, coach, things are starting to slow down there for me. I'm starting to be able to see it. You know, early in the season, we were telling him, you know, go attack the runner a little bit better on some of those outlet passes, right. and he was kind of a little hesitant with his assurance, and now he's just attacking it and going and getting it and seeing the ball. So, example of, he learned and we confronted it. He worked on it. And he saw it, and now he's making more plays. Yeah. And he'll continue to get better. And he'll know if he and now if he makes a mistake, he knows how to correct it on the field because it's happened to him. So uh, very pleased with Adrian. It feels like that whole defensive back room is just growing and growing oh, yeah. each and every week. I want to give a little love to as well uh, to, to Reggie Peterson. He's a former walk-on. Yeah. He's a former walk-on and has earned his time. He's gone from special teams to, to having a role defensively. And I tell you what. The pass he intercepted, that's a bullet. Oh, he yeah. just stuck his hand up there, and that's, yeah, he's run, charging down the field. That was, that was a blast to see. And I know yeah. he regrets fumbling the football, but he said he hasn't been in that situation ever. No. <laughs> Hard to blame, and then we got the touchdown out of it. Yeah, but that, was that, was pretty, that was a chaotic sequence. It was an excellent play by yeah. Reggie, and, and I'm running down the other side going, <laughs> run, Reggie, run! <laughs> and I'm going, oh, gosh, put it away. They're going to catch you. Yeah. And then it fumbled. I was like, oh. And then I saw Adrian pick it up and running. I said, all right, touchdown. And uh, so I was really excited for Reggie. Uh, what a great team leader. Yeah. Um, what a tough football player. He's a huge part of our football team. He's a huge part of the character of our team. He's a leader. Um, he's a young man that does everything we ask and uh, really excited to see him make that play. The, the touchdown drive we did have, Coach, it was impressive. It was the length of the field, a couple third down conversions, and E.J. Wilson had some tough physical yep, runs right. to finish that right. off. He said, I was, I'm getting in the end zone here. How do you generate more of that? It felt at times the team was finding some rhythm, just couldn't sustain right. it, the, the length of the field. How, how do you generate more of that? Or, or why maybe couldn't they keep keep those 90-yard drives going? Right, yeah. well, they were making some good plays on us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but we were just a little off here and there. Sure. You know, you can it's, – it's, you know, one play, like, you know, the opening play, um, Chris Mitchell, he's been catching everything, and he dropped one where – all of a sudden, we're off and running. We're having the, like about a 30-yard game. We're going to be off and running. I think we'll end up moving the ball, and it might be seven to seven right there on the first two drives. Yeah. You know, just little things like that. Um, but the, you know, they were they're a physical. Their their front was really physical up front. Their linebacker number one and 44, they were all over the place. Right. Um, so um, we've uh, you know got to play better and, and be more efficient. Um, in some of our um, execution in some of those areas. All right, we're really looking forward to this Saturday night at the Cage Military Appreciation Night. Salute to service, FAU and FIU. Take a look at the Owls season thus far, coming off uh, a meaningful victory against UAB as they're trying to claw their way to bowl eligibility as well. Lost on the road at UTEP before that, of course. Many folks know uh, the Owls quarterback, former Miami Hurricane, QB Nikozi Perry. He has been under center for Willie Taggart's squad this year. Uh, similar records, is it a similar profile and in, in, in scheme, strategy, uh, personnel? What, do you, what have you seen on tape of, of FAU thus far? FAU is extremely talented. I yeah. mean, their offensive line is huge and long. Their running backs are quick and athletic. The quarterback um, can make plays with his legs. He's making plays with his arm. Um, fast receivers, bigger defensively their front, we haven't played a front this year that rolls in and out guys that look, that, that are that good. Yeah. Um, I'm very impressed with the talent on their football team um, and uh, they're, they're going to be a tough task for us and our guys are excited about playing but they've got really good talent. You know you've been part of plenty of rivalries in, in your coaching career and your undergraduate career, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Colorado, Colorado State, now yeah. your first one, FAU, FIU. Uh, do you sense, you sense an extra energy in the building this week? A lot of these players, you know, we, we talk about it every year, they played they played Little League together, they right. you know, growing up, Pop Warner, and, and now a chance to square off again. Yeah, well, uh, there is a lot of excitement and you know one thing I keep saying is um, for the Shula Bowl, um, it is a rivalry, but we haven't won it around here, I think, since 2016. So minute, we, yeah. so FIU hasn't taken their part of the bargain of making it a better rivalry. So we need to show up Saturday and try to make it a, a rivalry game, and that's what we hope to do. But uh, uh, it's uh, the kids are excited about playing, and I'm pretty sure FAU is excited about playing, and um, there's a lot riding on it for both teams. Well said, absolutely. It's Saturday night at the cage on Stadium and Univision 11:40 a.m. the FIU Football Radio Network. We're gonna have a lot of fun this week, and let's pack it. Salute to service, military appreciation night, and a rivalry renewed. Coach, appreciate the time. Thank as you. Always. Appreciate it. That's FIU Panther talk. Three games left, two to perhaps bowl eligibility, but all that matters right now. Going 1-0 this weekend. We'll see you next time on Panther Talk. Pause up. Somebody light me up.
Ah! Ah!